Hey there, happy Friday. Good good afternoon, good morning. Allison DeFord, my goodness gracious, what are you doing here today? You know, I was I just stumbled in this room and decided to hang out. So now, is it like is it like the time during COVID about four years ago when I said, Hey, I call you up and I'm like, Hey, what are you doing? You're like, Yeah, not much. I'm like, hey, join join Damon and myself on on uh, we're just having a video call. Sure. And we were live. Like, how, how, remember that night? <laughs> yeah. Scared the shit out of me. I thought, are you joking? <laughs> oh, no. We're live. So Hi, we're everyone. Not, yeah. So, so, hey, but this, I gave you, I gave you a little fair warning. I had time. a little so, warning. A little fair warning. So, hey, I want to give a huge, war man, just a wonderful welcome. Lots of love to my dear friend, Allison DeFord, filling in for Damon today. So, Allison, thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. Just what an honor, privilege to share the stage for, man. This is not an all-star, Allison. This is not an all-star. This is a Hall of Famer that we have in the house today. Man, we got Hello. Wilton Rogers the third. So, Wilton, happy Friday, dude. How are you, man? Happy Friday. I'm doing well, Kurt. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's a Hall of Fame. I love that, man. I appreciate that. Well, yeah. I tell you, this is an honor. I'm, you know, good buddies with Rob Howes, you know, and I think yeah. you guys, you, you know Rob Howes, right? You know that guy? Do you know Rob at all? I know him a little bit, maybe for about five years, six years now, yeah. maybe even longer now. But yeah, he's he's he, been around. He he's still holding on to. He's still hanging around. I don't know why, but he's still hanging around, bugging me every day. Yeah, he's so. something. Well, he he and I have a special bond, man. I could I could go on and on about Rob. So anyway, we'll dive in. So Wilton, you're the automation guy. We're gonna dive in on how to make everybody's lives just a little bit easier, maybe even a lot of bit easier. We're going to show some examples. We're going to dive into that today. Hey, we've got a, a little chat here, a little comment. So from AC, hello, everyone. Enjoy the weekend. So guys, everybody out there, drop us a note. Let us know where you're coming from. You absolutely want to connect with Wilton on LinkedIn. You want to connect my dear friend, Allison, on LinkedIn. While you're at it, I'd love to connect with you too. So Wilton, here's our first question of the day. Um, my friend, are you sitting down? Are you ready for this one? Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. I'm All right, ready. Let's, Allison, here we go. Here's the first right. question of the day. Wilton, when you were a little guy growing up, little guy, you know, I know a big guy now. When you were a little guy growing up, who was your hero? Who did you look up to, just admire the heck out of? Who was your hero when you were a little guy growing up? I think still is uh, my, my, my father. Your father. All right. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. All right, Allison. I had Eddie Saunders Jr. on the show one time. And I said, Eddie Saunders Jr., who's your hero? He goes, your dad. You know what my question was? Hey, Eddie Saunders Jr., what's your dad's name? You know, like Mr. Einstein that I am, right? So, well, I'm not going to make that same mistake, being that you are Wilton Rogers. <laughs> Did you get that one, Allison? Did you get that? Yeah. Yeah. It took me Eddie Saunders. Second. I got it. Eddie Saunders Jr. What is your what, who, what's your dad's name? So, well, I I uh, you know I I am definitely not going to make that mistake twice. I'm assuming <laughs> since you are third, I'm not a mathematician, but I'm I think we're talking about Wilton Rogers number two. Is that correct? That is correct. You got it. You got all right. It. Well, hey yes. man, ding ding ding! I passed the math test, <laughs> Allison. So, all right. Why was Wilton Rogers number two your hero? I want to hear all the awesomeness about your dad. Well, you know, uh, growing up, we really uh, weren't uh, a TV family. We live on a farm, so we really didn't have a whole lot of TV. In fact, back then in the 70s, you probably only had one and a half channels. They both came in snowy, right? You know, remember that? You had to turn the antenna to sort of move around on a good day and try to get, get a channel just to watch the Smurfs or something. Um, but, uh, but the reason why is because uh, he came from um, poverty. He came from a place where, you know, uh, uh, wasn't uh, very high crime, um, low income. I mean, he, 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 his shoes were passed down by his older brothers and he was, I mean, you know, so he, he came from, he came from really nothing and he, and he became, got his master's, got his doctorate degree, went to, became a HR director for a university. So he, education and, and hard work was always something that he drilled into me. Um, and then living on the farm, I sort of took that to a different level on the, on the, on the uh, not only in, in studying but also um with just working around the farm and just seeing what he's come through and and knowing that his you know being around his siblings and seeing how much they rely on him even though he was the oldest like he stepped out of that that bubble and uh, became now he's you know everybody in, in his whole family is like looks up to him but he's he really worked hard to what he did and he never made it he never had an excuse he never made an excuse 
I never complained about anything growing up. And uh, my mom's a little tiny Spanish lady. And in the 60s growing up there, you know, there was not a whole lot of mixed kids like myself. Um, now there is, but not back then. There wasn't back in the 60s and 70s. But um, never heard him complain about anything. Never made an excuse. And so just, it just, it, it always um, being positive. So, you know, I never really had an idol. I liked, like, even growing up and, and watching sports and stuff, I liked players. I never idolized them. I never got excited to when I met my high, I mean, one guy I liked to follow, this tells you my age, Tony Darsett, right? That's why I like the Cowboys because Tony Darsett was a running back back in the day, right? Um, when I met him, it was like high nice to meet you. I wasn't like, oh, starstruck or anything. So I'm not, really haven't been high on that. So he's been, because I've been able to see his, see him for the last 50 plus years to sort of um, what he's done and follow, try to follow in his footsteps. So that's the reason why, uh, you know, he's, he's the person I look up to for sure. Wow. What man dropped a mic, Allison. So I man, you threw, <laughs> first you threw a Tony Dorsett comment in there. That's that was that brought me back, right? Gosh, well, you look like 10 years younger than me. We must be the similar age if you're throwing out. Well, thank years. you. I wish I looked as good as you do. My goodness gracious. Hey, we've got a couple of friends here dropping a note. We got Carlton saying hi guys, enjoy your Friday. We've got Joy saying hello, everyone. Feels good to be here. Joy, I totally agree. Wilton. Man, shout out to your dad, getting a PhD, educating the farm, raising kids. Allison, what's your takeaway on this inspiring story here? What are your thoughts? I, I What comes to me is like in a day and age where I feel like so many people idolize celebrity mm -hmm. and influencers and not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, I think it's refreshing to hear and be reminded mm -hmm. that ultimately at the end of the day, doesn't it make so much sense to look up to and learn from real authentic, mm -hmm. hard work, um, struggle, right? Because you can't mm -hmm. usually have real success, lasting success without struggle. And I, I love, you know, that he didn't complain because I think we live in a first world problems kind of, you know, world now. And if there's one thing I want to teach my girls, it's all the things you just said, you know, it's, it's uh, to be grateful for whatever is happening in the moment and that the sky's the limit. Nothing holds you back, but you. So that was my takeaway. And I got, I'd love to meet your dad. <laughs> yeah. How about, hey, how about a round of applause for Wilton Rogers, number two, man. Yes. So Wilton, give your dad a big shout out. Lots of love from us. How about, you know what? And I'm going to go off script a little bit. Your legacy, man. I'm like, you just really laid it out on, on, on your dad. If we were asking somebody uh, like, Hey, who's your hero? And they said, well, Hey, it's Wilton Rogers. What type of legacy do you feel that you're leaving? You know, I, I think that um, I'm hope I'm leaving somewhat of my stay stay in my father's footsteps. Just really hard work, and you know, and and not make excuses. I mean, along the way, being raised on a farm, you know, you had to sort of learn how to use your hands and get up in the morning and and do chores, right? And I feel like nowadays there's not a that that hard work is not really seen as much, mm -hmm. and I think when you touch people and people say, Hey, you know what, what, where do you want to, what kind of legacy you want to leave? I want to leave a legacy. Like, Hey, you know what? He, he worked hard for everything that he did. Mm -hmm. He put everything that he got into it, whatever he was focused on, he went all in, he went all in and, uh, and didn't stop until he got the, got the results they want, he wanted. So I think that, um, you know, pushing, pushing forward through adversity mm -hmm. and being able to come out, uh, you know, clean on the other side, uh, or at least try to, yeah. Um, in, in a very uh, respectful and humble way, um, is Alexia Hopley. Well, I absolutely love it. So let's slide into where we're at today. So, you know, fascinating, fascinating background, dad, PhD, farm, so on and so forth. So now we're going to dive in your CEO, the, the Hall of Fame extraordinaire at Simply Automate. What what inspired you to pursue this career in automation? Like how, walk us through that. And then we're going to dive into what you guys are doing at Simply Automate. Yeah, it's a funny story. I, I'm I'm not a tech tech guy, right? So when it comes down to 
automation and the AI in the back end, you know, you, I can't do it. But um, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, even from a young age. If you go back to my stories, that you, I was selling eggs. Selling and, eggs. And, you know, yeah, and uh, you know, sort of had that that love and that passion of of servicing people. Um, as I started um, growing businesses and and, and and creating businesses, um, I saw that technology was sort of taking over, and I saw that uh, you know the more you use the right tools, the easier it was to be able to grow your company and build stability. Well, back in 2016, um, I was in the fitness industry for a while. And um, after that, I sort of figured out what the heck I wanted to do. And uh, this company, a startup company, and they were um, an RPA, robotic process automation. And they were telling me how, how they can automate all these manual tasks, rule-based tasks, and you don't have to switch software. Long story short, they taught, they, they, they talked me in, they showed me what it was all about. And I was thinking in my head, wow, if I did this for my company, when I, before, before I let it go, before I sold it, I could have grown that to, mm -hmm. I could have used the personnel, the retention would have been low. I would have used that, the personnel for the right skills that they, that I could use them for. I, I was just like blown away. When I got involved, it was more in the enterprise world, which I didn't at that time when you're thinking, I was thinking on small businesses, small businesses, right? But when I got involved, it was all about the enterprise world. So at the time I was just thinking, okay, well, I'm in it. Let me learn as much. Whatever goes up must come down. It's got to, whatever's an enterprise got to feed into the small businesses sooner or later. It was just too expensive back in 2015 and 16. But I was learning as much as I possibly can. So I would ask the, the developers, the analysts, the project managers, can you do this? Can you do that? How do you do this? How do you do that? And uh, is there software that can do it for smaller businesses? They kept telling me, no, we use this software. I can't do it. It costs too much. They're limited to what they can do. All these different hurdles that that were uh, uh, you know in front of me. But I kept that back in my mind. It's like, okay, someone's going to come out with a software that's going to be able to do this. You know, I just want to be on the front end of it. Lo and behold, they did. And back in 2018, um, I found a software that could do it. So uh, one of the developers asked, hey, can you do this for a friend of mine that has, a, has an accounting firm back home? And I told the accounting firm, I was like, hey, and a property management company, both two guys that, that I knew, was like, let's do this. You don't have to pay me. I'm working for a company, but you can, uh, I'll have them do it. You pay them, the developers, and, and you take care of it. And, I mean, they'll let them de um, develop it for you. Long story short, we were able to automate a few of processes. One of the county firms saved about 25 hours a, a week. Um, the property management company at the time was saving five, but they were able to, about five, six hours a week, but they were able to scale because of it without hiring any personnel. So if they were replaced that personnel, they would have probably been 20, 30, 40 hours a week, but they didn't have to because they had that software. So I was like, whoa, this is mind blowing. So I went back to the company to tell them what I was doing. They want to stay in the enterprise world. They're like, hey, no, you were, we're doing well here. We'll stay here. I was like, all right. So my contract was over in 2018. Decided to walk away. I told my wife, I want to move back home, downsize this all in, had her 100% support. Uh, you know, that's, that's part of the reason why, you know, we have, we'll be able to do what I'm doing because of her. She really supported me. Um, and it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But um, when I started figuring out that this kind of for small businesses, I was all in. And then I noticed that Everybody was like me. They needed the education. They needed, you know, they, um, I'm on the borderline of, of the baby boomers. So, you know, having that, that the mentality, like what's brick, if it's not broke, don't fix, don't mess with my system. You don't know more than me. I know my business more than you type of, you know, personality. Mm -hmm. I knew what I was involved with. And at that time, that's most of the companies that, that I was talking to, but I was able to, uh, you know, relate to them. So I, I was able to get some opportunities and little by little, we just sort of started growing, growing the company. And the reason why I did that is because I know as a business owner, you want to be able to scale your company with the, with the personnel that you have. You don't want them behind the computer typing all day and sending emails and collecting data and all this stuff. That's boring. That's boring. You want to use their talents and their skills for things that are going to bring more value, not only to the company, but for them as well. They'll allow them to feel like they're, be, they're bringing something to the company. Um, and once we realized that the, the, um, the automation that was involved with can do that, um, I was all in. So sort of started taking off that way. And here we are five and five, six years later and still at it. 
Wow. All right. Great story, man. And, you know, you talk about having that support system, right? Uh, dad was a big support. Your wife is support for your entrepreneurial journey. Let's, I'm going to go back to your entrepreneurial journey was uh, for folks out there that, you know, say they're looking to start their own entrepreneurial journey. They're working for a corporation. Maybe they were downsized. They're an external entrepreneur, whatever. How were you, when you launched into your entrepreneurial journey yourself, scary exciting what was what was going through your mind what feelings did you have both i think they were both right uh, scary and exciting but i always saw what would keep what could be right um i knew that if i did this what it would do for them mm -hmm. so i got to mm -hmm. figure out how what to, how to do this in order to make sure that they're that they look at me like oh you got you you made a difference in my life, in my company's life, in my family's life. If I know I can touch that part of somebody, then I did my job. So I got to figure out, okay, I know what, what we're doing can do it. What do I need to do to get there? Mm -hmm. Right? So that's sort of the the, 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 person, the attitude I had in any business that, that I was doing. But you started off, you know, I would say I was, it was a, I always learned, I call it a side, it was a side hustle sort of, because mm -hmm. I always learned from, from, I went to work for somebody first. Whether it was in, I had a mortgage company, I had a cell company, I had a fitness company, and automation company, right? But I would work for somebody first, so I could at least have you know feed the family, take care of things, right? But I was always learning. But I always knew there was going to be a, a cap, you know. I was going to hit, I was going to hit it somewhere where I couldn't grow, or I couldn't be part of the inner circle, right? So I never, I made sure that I was, I kept my mind like, okay, I'm going to build this company up, do what I can to build it up but I'm going to learn as much as I can. And I'm going to little by little take those check marks and start putting them on the side. So when I walk away, I have this in place. Mm -hmm. I've already built my name in the industry. I sort of, you know, put my name out there and people know who I am. So I sort of did that. That was the way. So it didn't make, it, it was scary because you were on your own, but you, I didn't walk into something that I didn't know. Right. I didn't walk into something like this. Just, okay. I want to open up a coffee shop. I'm like, I don't know what to help. open up a coffee shop. I don't know what to do. You know, I don't, I worked for that. I figured out what to do. I followed their system, seen, seen the things that were, they were doing right, the things that they were doing wrong, the things that I can change, that I can improve on my own. I worked on all those little things before I, I jumped ship. So yes, it was scary, but it was exciting because I always knew the outcomes. I've always, I, I saw the outcome working for somebody else, right? And I could see if I could do that for myself and build a team to help us do that, it's going to, you know, it's going to change, change what we're doing. So yeah, that's sort of a, uh, it's, so to answer your question, it was both. <laughs> both. A little scary, a little exciting, all of the above, right? Allison, what are your what, hey, Rob is in the house here today. So Rob drops a comment. Rob sending you lots of love, dude, man. Hopefully your ears were ringing. We we're chatting about you earlier. What a journey. So absolutely love it. Allison, you're dealing with entrepreneurs all day, every day, 30 year entrepreneur. You're, are you 30 years now? How many years have you been? Yeah. 30? You're 30, right? So your thoughts hearing Walton's story, what's what's your takeaway? Well, I think what's so exciting and what makes him successful is the thing that Kurt and I and Damon are always talking about and preaching and shouting from the rooftops for whoever will, will listen is focusing on the customer. So I loved it. You talk a lot about service. And if anybody that's joining us today or for, for the replay, if you have not checked out Wilton's LinkedIn profile. Look at his about. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting and heartfelt. It's one of the most interesting abouts I've ever read on LinkedIn, by the way. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, my point in sharing that is that that gave me more insight into if I was considering hiring you, if I was considering working for you, if I was considering, you know, well, what is his company all about? He's, he's the leader. It was, it was so much more interesting and um, enlightening than all of the, you know, I think a lot of times we get stuck with like fluff marketing speak or sales speak, or, you know, kind of the, the typical um, and yours is atypical. So first of all, I love that. Thank you. And, and I think it ties directly in with what you just said um, is, well, how could I make their life better? So Kurt and I talk about this endlessly and we encourage our clients to do the same thing. It's like, 
my question to clients is always, well, how do you want your customers to feel? And I, I get crickets because they haven't thought about that in a long time or maybe ever. Yeah. So I feel like when you put customer first and then you reverse engineer and go, okay, now how can I get there? Mm -hmm. I'm like, bravo. Yeah. Man. That's, yeah. I think that's how you get from point A to point B even faster and, and in a more su successful and sustainable way. So it's just, mm, it's authentic. Yeah. I'll give you a hug. <laughs> well, thank you. That, that, that means a lot. Thank you so much. You know, and, and, and just going off that, I think um, if, if you go into entrepreneurship and you try to, it's for the money, you're, you're not going to do well. You know, when you're going up for the passion, for the love of it, mm -hmm. things will start dropping in your way. They'll start coming, mm -hmm. right? And it, it may be sooner, maybe later, but as long as you love what you do, it's going to happen. It's it will it. happen. Yeah. Right. Oh, I absolutely love that. So let's dive in. Uh, so Curious Minds are dying to know, Will. And so you've kind of teed it up. So five five years ago, you started your company and you're starting to uh, give, give us a little flavor of what you do. Let's dive in. Simply automate. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. How do you, your team, make the world a better place? Let's uh, let's dive into some of the, the activity that you guys provide here. Absolutely. Well, I want to give a shout out to Rob because Rob's been Rob was my, him and I, he started, when I first opened the company, he was the one I called right away. Um, and and I, me and him have been partners and, and he had been doing some marketing stuff. And I was like, man, I love this personality. And I said, he needs to be the guy to help me brand this thing. And man, he's been, he's been a blessing ever since. So I had to give some love out to him. Um, but, uh, you know, just sort of um, give an idea of our company. When we first started off, we were considered, we were an automation company, just automation. It's called RPA, Robotic Process Automation. And the reason why is because a lot of businesses, with those, we go into businesses and we look at what you're doing manually, what are repetitive type tasks, what are rule-based type tasks, the things that are mundane that you do every single day. If you can walk into your office and you say, I got to do that again today, I got to do that again tomorrow, I got to do it two or three times a week, all these things could probably be automated through RPA, right? So we focus on that. That's what we call low hanging fruit because you want to get those off your plate so you can sort of focus on other things, right? So if we can get, like, I'll give you an example, like inventory processing was a huge thing about what we continue to do, right? Uh, inventory or uh, invoice processing and things like that, we, we do a lot of, right? Because there's a lot of grab this data, put it here, send it here, save it here, whatever the case may be, right? All these different tasks have to happen within a process to be completed. But it's all manual and it's all digital. It's all rule based. You follow certain rules to get to get it done. So we got involved. Like no one's doing this for small businesses, and that's where people were using so many hats, wearing so many hats to have have to do those. So what we did is like, okay, well, you know what? Let's eliminate that. Let's automate it. So we start automating it, and that, that's sort of how we our company started. And as we start growing, we noticed like, okay, well, now you're out. We're helping me automate stuff. Out, here's AI. Here's machine learning. We got to use all this. So now we got into intelligent automation space as well, right? So RPA is more like, hey, this, what are you doing? Let's get those off your place so we can focus on intelligent automation. Now we're using AI and automation combined, right? So um, that, that's our focus now. So the way we got involved was basically seeing that no one was actually using RPA for smaller businesses. It's like, mm -hmm. these are the ones that need it the most because they're the ones that wear a lot of hats. If you go to, if we went to a, a, an enterprise company, you know, one person did one th did this one thing a hundred times a day, right? And they had a staff that grew so big and they were building all a company. They had 20 people doing the same thing because they had to. Going to automate that was easy. It was like, boom, we automated it. And now they can do other things, right? Actually, enterprise were trying to downsell, were trying to cut their overhead so they can, you know, the investors can get a bigger piece of that pie. So that's what, but in the smaller businesses, they didn't want to. They wanted to use their people to do other things, right? So now that we start doing the RPA space, get into intelligent automation, that's when the creativity from the employees start coming. Like, oh, if we have this software. What if we use this AI? What if we start doing this? How can we put that all together and make it work? So now that creativity start coming, I was like, wait a minute. We have the team to be able to do that. Why don't we do this as well, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. So now we're, we're in the RPA space, we're all in intelligent autom automation because everybody's talking about AI, but no one really knows how to use it. They're like, oh yeah, we do AI. What do you do, 
You know, we do chat GPT. Okay, that's like 2% of what AI is, right? <laughs> so, but when you get involved with, with what they're looking to do and you lead them in the right direction, their vision and their creativity will take you on, the, on their path for them. And it's so quick because everything's sort of already laid out for you. Mm -hmm. I have a, can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If, okay, do any of these companies ever feel fearful that how, do, how can we trust that the automated process is going to do it right versus the person like, and this may be a dumb question, but like, is there any fear in switching over? All the time. All the time. Great. That's a great question. <laughs> Most of the time you, you see that fear. Two things. People are going to fear to lose their job. First of all, second fear is, is this really going to work? So what we do, we do two things. Let's, let's start with the latter. We test it first. We let them see it before they, so they're still doing it. We're just building on the side. And then we test it, say, here, see it work. You're still doing it. If it doesn't work, you're still doing it. And all of a sudden, it started doing it. like, oh, I don't have to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you press it again. Okay, I don't have to do it anymore. And all of a sudden, a week later, like, oh, I don't have, I'm gone. I don't have to do this anymore, <laughs> right? Second part of that is the same in the same breath is they're fearful of losing their job. But now, like, I don't have to do this anymore. I can do more of this. Right. I don't do this. I can focus on this. So that's when it comes to small business. That's what we love about small businesses because all your, 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 the owners, the founders, the, the, the directors, the leaders of that company are always looking for to grow and they're usually looking internally mm -hmm. first, right? They retain, keep that retention, right? So they're like, oh, you know, Allison does great over here, but now instead of her having to do this, now she can run this whole department over here and sort of bring her vision of what she wants to do to help us build this part up and focus all the time and attention over here. So there was fear at the beginning, but now people are starting to see that technology is sort of already stepping in. The fear is sort of fading away. But the other part is, does it work? That's the fear factor. Like, so we test it out and we do what's called, we, we put in what's called hyper automation. So our hyper care. So we put in hyper care. So we, we test it, test it, test it. And then once it's ready to run and we know it's working, then we just turn the bot on, turn the employee off on that one. And they, they can do other things. That would give me so much peace of mind. I, and I love that you call it care. Yeah. Hyper care. Sorry. Yeah. Hyper care. And what's hysterical, the person, you know, and you know, we've all been there. I know, or at least I'll speak for myself. You're like, Hey, I, you know, this is my baby. This is my task. Nobody knows how to do it. Like I do it, you know? And so you take such pride in it. And then all of a sudden somebody like Wilton comes along and like, you know, I feel totally threatened. You know, I don't want to like anybody, you know, lose my job or think like I'm not working, but then all of a sudden you pull that task off my plate and then ask that person, Hey, you know what? Do you want to take that task back? Gosh, no, man. I couldn't wait. You know, <laughs> yeah. And now it's like, now you're relieved and you're like, I can't, and you know, I had an e-commerce business a hundred years ago. I used to constantly, like, we used to always challenge ourselves. Like, what are we doing today that we're going to make fun of six months from now? You know, like how could we, you know, I was in my thirties. And so I was a little bit more, uh, a little more agile, I guess, Allison, but you know, I love what you're bringing to the table. Well, and it's like, you know, Hey, what are we doing today that we're going to make fun of six months from now? Like, man, how did we get by without Wilton and the team, you know? So, and I'm yeah. sure you guys hear that all the time. Wilton. We do, we do, you know, it's, um, there's a lot of people that just already forgot about their, that this tasks are automated. They're like, Oh yeah, we've been doing that for years already. We should totally forgot about it, you know? Right, right. You know, so yeah, it's, it happens all the time. And, but once people start seeing what it can possibly do there, it's incredible to see the, the vision and creativity that happens within the organization, because now the whole, not only physically are they away from it, but emotionally and mentally, um, they're, they're, that's erased off their mind completely. They don't have to focus on that at all. Mm -hmm. So it's not even a seed in their head to worry about it anymore. Right. So that's totally gone. So now they can replace that with something better. Right. Oh, that's phenomenal. How about, do you have any, if I, I don't want to put you on the spot, do you have any wonderful success stories that come to mind immediately that you can share where like just somebody rocked it out and just saved a bunch of money and time? Anybody come to mind immediately? Well, we, yeah, well, we have, uh, there's, there's a couple come to mind, but I'll, there's one um, that we have, it's a, it's a retail and uh, they had uh, multiple, it's actually a, um, uh, a grocery a grocery store, a small grocery store. They had five or six locations, and um, they had three and a half employees 
uh, doing uh, the invoicing and billing. Three and a half. Three and a half. And uh, they were wondering, like, you know, they, they were seeing delays. They were seeing a lot of errors. And they sort of wanted to, the employees have been there with them for a while, but they wanted to move them into other areas of the business. And they were, that's why they had, some of them were doing it part-time, some of them were doing it full-time, but they had three and a half employees doing it. Long story short, um, this was four, three, four years ago. Um, we automated it all. Three of those employees um, no longer did it. That The part-time employee did the ones that would get kicked back to them because it's always a human in the loop some things that, that that they have to take care of still yeah. regardless and it still happens but we find out okay where are these kickbacks happening why are they happening a little by little we start improving it, improving it, improving it, improving it to now it's almost like she could do it from her phone like okay i gotta fix that okay, <laughs> it's done right so that's what happened so that was a great one because it was it was a uh, three and a half uh, employees i mean full time just doing it for you know three right. doing it full time part, part time it's a lot of hours and their their ROI was just ridiculous. I, I can't. It's in the hundred of thousands. I mean, it's it's right. they don't even they haven't even been doing it over you know the last four years, three or four years now. Um, it's sort of forgot off their plate now, right? So they don't right. even hire anybody to do any of that anymore because right. I know they just they bring in more vendors. All they got to do is add that into into the system, and the bot will take care of it. So Gosh. that's one of them. And then we have a smaller a smaller company um, that we did one for. It was an accounting firm. Um, and they probably had like five, four or five employees. And uh, we started doing their tax return and their onboarding. And um, I think that that went from having one one person doing it full time to them not doing it at all, um, pretty much, you know, and, and all the information, all the information that they gathered for the employees came or from their clients came in, the bot know where to put in the system, know how to put it, put to, put the, put it together. Send it for approval, write it off. If not, they can manually put in what they need to put in. Boom, and then off and running. In, on, onboarding was, you know, the sales trying to sell it, sell it. What you onboarding? You had to put all this information and sort of onboard them. All they did is onboard them, send the information, the bio pick it up, take care of it, and they're done. Wow. So, absolutely, man, that is awesome. Hey, we've got a, another fun comment here from Sean. Sean, happy Friday. Aloha, Kurt, Elson, and Wilton. Automation is super important for any business. Enjoying this talk a lot. Well, happy Thank Friday you. to you, Sean. Thank you for joining us. Again, drop a note in the chat box. We're here with our dear friend, Wilton Rogers the third. We're talking Simply Automate. So now I have a dear friend who like, he's kind of like my automation coach. Uh, he's more on the manufacturing side automation. And he always says three things, Allison, our friend, Dave Chrysler. He says, you need yeah. to either eliminate automate or delegate and so i was just talking about that with somebody this morning and so i just i i couldn't love what you guys are doing more now well i don't know if i'm if you even know that i'm going to do this so i love these case studies these success stories you're just making the world a better place saving folks all sorts of crazy money and processes i actually have somebody that i'm going to pull on stage that's going to share their experience of working with you do you mind if i don't want to embarrass you do you mind if no. i do you mind I'll, if i do I would like to. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's see what this gentleman has to say. You ready? Let's Bureau see how this sales goes. and operations planning for. Hello, my name is Justin Metzger. <laughs> I'm the director of sales and operations planning for Can-Am Steel Corporation. We have seven plants across the United States, and we have been working with Wilton and the Simply Automate team for about three years now. Our main issue at the start of our partnership was we were having trouble getting data from our legacy systems into our Power BI planning environment. Since partnering with uh, Wilton's team, we've been able to save about three hours of report running per day uh, and have up-to-date data to help run our sales and operations planning process every single month. And since working with the team, we've also been able to achieve a 95% accuracy on our forecasting process because we're spending less time pulling data uh, and more time analyzing it and talking to our team. So uh, thank you to Wilton and the Simply Automate team uh, for everything you've done for us and looking forward to our continued success together and working more in the future. Thanks. 
Wow. How about Justin. 95%? <laughs> so let's, uh, you know, hey, and Rob drops a comment here. Complete game changer, fire. Mm-hmm. I agree, my friend Rob, uh, 100%. Well, tell us a little story here. So this is right in mine in Allison Space Manufacturer, it sounds like, seven plants. What's the, what's our story here? Yeah, well, um, you know, Canon came to us. They that, like, like Justin was saying, they wanted to pull some, some information out of uh, – the legacy system. Um, it was taking them quite a while for, at each location. And we, we found out as each location was doing a little bit different, um, had the same logic, but they were sort, sort of doing it different. And so we figured out which is the best route to take to sort of do it. And, and so we can, so no one can be involved because if you get everybody involved, but like, well, I'm doing it this way, I'm doing it this way. It's like, no, let's just build it, build it, build it. And then just implement it at all the locations. Mm-hmm. And that's what we did. And once we did that, it was just like, it was like, Thank you. You know, we just it was a game changer. Right now, I think they have five or six processes running with us right now. We're working. I think we're working on one or two of them as we speak, um, because um, manufacturing. What we found out, and that's why we like manufacturing, because um, there's a lot of different logic that's built into manufacturing. A lot, and there's a lot of, and it's all rule based. I mean, down to um, you know gathering little nuts and bolts and trying to figure out how to order these things and and, and, and we so we created areas where you know there was no delay you could tell when things were coming in how much they were getting sold where the delay if they were, if they need to order it here's we place this order here are the areas you need to place it here where you can get it faster all these different and they had all these rules and i was like just show us the rules and it just sort of and it worked and what we found out with manufacturing is that they already have everything working they just got to you know, sit down and figure out how we can get most of this automated. Just it's already done. It, so manufacturing has been been fun for us. Accounting has been fun for us because all, everything is already it's already done for you. It's already rule based, and they use so many applications. They follow so many you know rules and different things. And all we have to do is figure out what they are. Just show us what they are. Walk us through. Not only will we we can automate it. But we can show you ways that we can improve it and eliminate some in some in some cases eliminate things because you don't have to have this we can go straight from here to here so they have to go here 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 we can just go from here to here because it's all automated now so you know canem has been a great a great client of ours um we love the manufacturing industry um, we really really do i think there's there's and we've seen a lot of a, a lot of growth and, and and a lot of them are starting to come on board like okay we not we need to learn more they know they need it and and what they're doing is they're looking outside of their 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 walls now to figure out how can I improve it more. Mm-hmm. Even though they have an IT team, because we work with Canon Steel's IT team all the time, and their 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 thing is to keep that structure internally, right? So we have a good relationship with their team. But as far as bridging everything and putting everything together, they need that knowledge and experience from people that are doing it on a regular basis. Where IT team doesn't have that. IT team knows how to. Once it's implemented, they know how to take care of it and, and, and work it. But they don't they don't know the industry like like we do. So they they'll bring us in to talk to them, to build it for them, hand it out to them. And when something happens, the IT team knows exactly who to talk to, when they're gonna get it, and and how fast it's gonna get done. So uh, yeah, we love we love manufacturing and Canon Steel is one of our one of our great clients. Well, congratulations. Super impressive, man. Pat yourself on the back. What a win that is. Allison, I know what's going through your mind as far as uh, your manufacturing world and automation. A lot. Um, first of all, I'm going to invite you on my podcast. So we'll we'll talk about that separately. Yes. Um, and if you watching this are not already following Wilton's podcast, Automation Nation, mm-hmm. you need to go subscribe because it's amazing. And I just want to thank you for uh, stepping outside of the box and really for doing courageous, hard things Mm -hmm. because you are making people's lives better, their businesses more successful. And I think, you know, I have such a big, my heart is filled with love for manufacturers and to see somebody that can come in and help them streamline things right Mm -hmm. so that they can create more which is what they're so good at um i I just it fills me with joy and uh excitement for the future so i just want to say 
Thank you. For awesome. Well, thank you. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you for those amazing words. I really appreciate it. It's, it's so much fun. We really, really enjoy what we do. Um, we, we know that once people are on board and they understand, they see what we do, that we know it's going to make a difference. We can have one conversation with a company and within 30 minutes to an hour, we, we know what we're capable of doing or how, how we can help them improve what they're looking to do. You know, and I, and I love what you're saying now, Allison, because I'm thinking of like so many small manufacturers we work with, you know, 30, 40, 50 employees and just, you know, everybody's grinding, you know, like, you you know, they're uh, like you said at first right off the bat. Well, and they're throwing on different hats and just, you know, so the, to stop, take a time out and ask myself like, hey, gee, you know how I've been doing this for the past five years. Is there a more efficient way? Can I, hey, let me go out and shop for a new software. Stop what I'm doing. Take a chance and a risk that this thing might blow up on my face. And now, now I'm responsible, you know, like, yeah. so it's wonderful that you guys come in as that mentor, that Sherpa, that trusted guide and like, hey, customer. And Allison, what's the word, right? Care. You're going to come in. You're going to hold my hand. And like, and, and again, like these guys are coming in, like I'm here, my boss is down the hall. Like, you know, my job's on the line or my reputation's on the line. So you kind of come in and say, hey, listen, I've got your back. We're gonna help you save time, hours, and we're and, and I'm not taking your job. Let's get you doing some more uh, challenging things since you've been doing this for so long. So I just, I couldn't love more what you're doing. Rob says, eliminate, automate, delegate. Thank you, Rob, for the comments. Let's start winding down because well, we need, you know, Allison, we can't eat up all this time. He needs a lot of manufacturers to get out there and help. <laughs> save time, money, energy energy, all these things. Well, and as we wind down, I have last two questions for you. Number one, as an entrepreneur, I love asking this question, best business advice that you've ever received or that you would love to pass along to your younger self, a younger entrepreneur. What's the best business advice you feel that you've ever received? The best business advice I've, I've received is passion and patience, PMP, right? You have to have the passion to do it. You have to have the patience to, to make sure that, it, that you're doing it the right way, right? If you don't have that patience, um, you're going to fall into a hole that's going to either take you down or it's going to give you a bad name. So be patient. Don't take it. Don't take everything, you know, that you, that you, that you can just grab onto. So I think passion and patient um, are something that I stick by because um, being an entrepreneur, you have to be very patient. You have to have the passion for sure, but you, there's no quick get quick scheme out there you know those those things if they are they may last for a day or, or a month or even a year but after that it's gonna you're gonna take a big fall so be very patient and build it right well drop the mic on that one absolutely great advice allison as we wind down your takeaways thoughts from our conversation today that you want to share i have many uh but i will distill it <laughs> since we're wrapping up um I think I can speak from my own personal experience of being fearful of and getting stuck in a rut. Of, and I, and I talk about this a lot, you know, this is the way we've always done it. Like that's death to your company. I've been that person. So when I talk about that, I'm talking from experience with my clients. Um, I do understand that fear and of adopting something new and of letting go, letting, letting this bot do it right instead. But you have reinforced my newfound belief that I, I love the hyper care. So showing me if I'm your smaller or mid-sized business, I'm going to do this alongside your person mm -hmm. and we're going to test it and we're going to make sure we work out any bugs. And we're going to show you all you have to do is let go mm -hmm. right yeah. and and allow your business to grow mm -hmm. faster if you just let go a little and mm -hmm. trust try yeah. something new so i i love that i'm i'm excited to uh continue following you to learn more to see where you take things and um and really to explore I think you're um, a prolific guy and, but also pragmatic. So I love those two P's mm -hmm. where it's no. you're thinking, but you've got your head on straight. And I appreciate that in a consultant and a business owner. So gosh, keep guiding people <laughs> that way. That's 
found thank his you. calling. And Wilton, how about this comment here from Sean? Sean, thank you. P and P, love it, Wilton. It's hard to have both sometimes, at least for me, at, for me at least. Heavy on passion, light on patience, still working on it. Sean, you're doing awesome. Thank you. For Sean, it, we're, yeah, we're all, hey, trust me, it's not easy having patience. Trust me, I've been <laughs> in the game for a long time. I feel the pain, Sean. I've been light there too. Uh, but if you keep grinding, uh, you know, it, it, it'll it'll come for sure. It'll come for sure. So, well, I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, just what a joy. What a privilege. Keep making the world a better place. You, your team, Rob, your family. Rob Wilton, or thank I'm you. sorry, Wilton Rogers, the second man. Big shout out to him. And thank so you. we just want to thank you. Know. Best way to connect with you, obviously here on LinkedIn, social, uh, simply automate anywhere else that we can find you. Yeah, it, LinkedIn, we're on it every day. You see us posting every day. Rob is in the, he's in the, in the building. If I if 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 someone's posting and, and doing something under where I'm not if I'm not available, he'll ping me and let me know. Hey, you got to answer them back. You got to get with them. So you know, have a great team. Uh, you know, Rob's amazing. So LinkedIn is probably the best way. We're there. We live there. Um, you know, and uh, we we do a lot of education, a lot of support, not knowledge based things on there. So I would say reach out to us there. Awesome. And catch their podcast, of course. So, uh, hey, Allison, how about this? You know, we always like to say, you know, as we wind down, you know, we close out the week, go out and just be someone's inspiration, just like our dear friend, Wilton. And if you've been hanging out with us for the past however long we've gone, it's a great opportunity to stand up and stretch and give a big standing ovation for Wilton Rogers III for just absolutely hitting the ball out of the park today. So, Wilton, thank you, thank you dude. God bless you. Keep making the world a better too. place. We appreciate you. So, guys, thank you in the chat box. Thank you for your comments. We appreciate you. Allison DeFord, my friend, just sending you a boatload of love. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for filling in for Damon. And just, you know what? I might, maybe Damon will call in sick next week, too. So, anyway, well, that's another yeah. subject for another time. <laughs> so, don't tell anybody I said that. So, all right, guys, have an amazing, blessed, crazy, thank wonderful you. weekend. And we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you guys so much.